Hey there, and welcome back to episode 17 of our metric fastener standards comparison series. Uh, I know it's been a few months, the beard's a little longer, the hair's a little shorter, you know, some things have changed. Um, definitely been uh, putting in a lot of work towards uh, young fastener professionals and getting things going there, as well as another board I'm a member of now, the C12 board. Um, it's a Christian organization for, for business leaders. Um, and uh, so so I've been staying real busy with that and really stepping into my role doing the business development stuff over here at Yearling. So, uh, but I'm glad to be back and glad to be doing some videos again. Uh, you can expect that that we will continue to produce these uh, and I'll do my best to make it as consistent as possible, even with all the other responsibilities. Uh, I stopped for a couple months and I just kept getting all these messages like, hey man, when are you gonna start again? So so I guess I'll, I guess uh, there's there's people out there that like to watch these. So, so uh, yeah, <laughs> that's why I was making them, right? So uh, today we are gonna be talking about pins. Uh, we're gonna be talking about particularly comparing parallel pins um, so, for example, like, you know, your DIN 7 to the ISO 2338. Um, I could throw in DIN 6325 to ISO 8734. Um, you're going to run into a lot of the same issues uh, with those comparisons. So we're really going to be focused more on DIN 7 and ISO 2338. Um, I might touch up on the other ones, uh, maybe in a blog article or maybe in my next blog video. We'll see. Uh, so, uh, you know, today, you know, like I said, sourcing pins can be a bit tough. Uh, a lot of the pins that, that you guys have been able to source for a while have, uh, you know, their standard has been withdrawn. It's actually been withdrawn for quite some time. Um, and there's often a lot of confusion around pins. And then a lot of times with pins spe uh, specifically uh, that, you know, just very much minor differences in their structure can mean a huge difference in their application. Um, and so and we'll learn more about that here in just a minute. Um, so, so you know, I'm, I'm willing to bet that you may have, considering that, you know, the standards have been withdrawn and all that, that it had some issues with, with sourcing on those before. And, and, you know, that's where your link steps in, right? We try to help you guys out with that. So, so what does this uh, limited interchangeability mean? If, if you've actually looked at um, some of the the sources out there that for for uh, comparing DIN 7 and ISO 2338, you might have seen a term that's often used called limited interchangeability, right? Uh, generally, if a fastener is considered interchangeable, that means that it shouldn't, there, there's no difference really in the dimensions of the fastener, at least. Uh, there might be differences in hardness and stuff, so there still could be some, some reason to require like the ISO over the DIN or something like those lines. Uh, but as far as dimensionally, it's the same, and so it should still fit the application. Um, in this case, uh, with limited interchangeability, as you'll see, there is both a uh, dimensional reason um, or a structural reason and a material reason, as, as you guys will, will hear more about in a second. So, uh, so again, according on one of my favorite uh, personal resources is actually from from Worth. Uh, they've got uh, Worth Fasteners is called Differences Between DIN, EN, and ISO Standards. Um, it's a good resource. Uh, and it said that the that you know this is a interchange uh, a uh, partially interchangeable or limited inter, inter, uh, interchangeable uh, uh, standard here, and uh, and so the changes can be categorized into three ways, and this is mostly true for for the majority of of the fasteners when we're converting between DIN and ISO. Uh, in this case, it's nominal length redefined. The heights of the head has changed, and the hardness range for the steel is defi uh, defined. So again, what we're seeing is, is that there is a slight change in how the part is defined, which is what we, if you go back to some of the stuff we've talked about with washers and all, um, it wasn't necessarily that there was a big difference in 
the uh, there's no real difference in the dimensions of the washer, uh, but that the uh, the way that the washer is defined is you know defined by its actual uh, ID is a, uh, so internal diameter as opposed to the bolt that it would fit, and so that's what we saw when we went from DIN to ISO, uh, and so so that's why you might see you know looking for a DIN one twenty five, you end up getting uh, and you're looking for like an M. I don't know, just throwing out a number like 4.3 or something, 4.2, and you get back that it's M4. It's the same item in ISO 70, 89, 70, 90. Uh, the only real difference would be the, uh, the material strength, right? Uh, and so, uh, and then with the heights of the heads, you know, we see that, we saw that with the ISO bolts, right? Remember, if you go back to the DIN 933 versus ISO 4017s, that at certain sizes, that 10, 12, 14, and 22, if you remember, um, that the width across the flats was about one millimeter smaller. And if I remember correctly, the head height, I think might have been a millimeter smaller as well or something, but but uh, don't hold me to that one. Let's keep moving. Uh, and then hardness range has changed. And so we'll see that in a second. So uh, you may immediately jump to thinking, well, hey, if the length has changed then and the height has changed, then the different, it can't be interchangeable, right? It's not quite that simple, okay? Again, notice that I said that the nominal length was redefined, right? To make this very simple, Consider my dog, okay? Say that my I say my dog is three feet long, but I didn't include the tail. And then I decide to change the definition of the length of my dog, and so I say that my dog is four feet long, including the, now, that's now including the tail, right? Did the dog change size or length? No, it's just the way that we define the dog's length changed, right? And that's how it is with these pins that, um, that, you know, in this case, whereas the ends of say DIN 7 were not included in the nominal length, according to the DIN 7 standard in the ISO 2338 standard, the head is actually included in that nominal length. Uh, so, so that's the reason it's not that the actual sizes have changed so much as that the just the definition of the size was changed and so that can throw some people off um, so be careful for that um and so you know the main difference between the two is really this height of the heads and the way that the head is even structured that din 7 stayed with more of a rounded head and you know you got your parallel pin and more of a rounded head on it whereas the din uh whereas iso 2338 is going to have more of that flat finish and you wouldn't think that like on something maybe this small that that little rounded head and the flat you might not think that that would make much of a difference but it absolutely can um, and that's why you know we say it's limited interchangeability because for some applications it is interchangeable uh but for many applications that you know they, they're people are looking for exactly what they're asking for a din 7 or an iso 2338 so so you just have to kind of fill that out uh, when you're when you're trying to source them because um, one could be easier to source than the other. And honestly, we go back and forth with it. Um, generally, ISO 2338 is what we're finding to be easier to get out of Europe. But uh, but DIN 7, you know, it can still be found. Uh, so, uh, you know, the DIN 7, like I said, had rounded heads and flat ends. Um, it's mostly while you're considered limited interchangeability, right? Uh, and then lastly, like I said, the harnesses are slightly different. Um, they're still considered unhardened pins, okay? Um, that the DIN 7 and the ISO 2338 is considered an unhardened uh, parallel pin. Um, but the range that's acceptable did change with, with ISO, the ISO 2338 having a higher hardness range. Um, I believe that the new hardness range clarified for the steel was 125 to 245 HV, um, whereas for stainless steel, it's now 210 to 280 HV, which uh, I believe is a good bit higher than where it was before. I think uh, it was closer to 140 HV or something like that would be in the past. Um, and so, y'all, that's it for today. You know, right? I just wanted to give you guys some things to think about when you're looking at these parallel pins as a review. I kind of reviewed a couple times as a review. Uh, nominal links were redefined, meaning that the measurement points for the links have changed. This is important to notice, particularly for quality control. 
right? Uh, that make sure that they're measuring correctly on uh, on those items. Um, that you'd hate to to send something back and pay for it to be reshelved and all that kind of stuff. And and then it turns out that it was actually exactly what you needed, and you just didn't measure it correctly. Um, the head heights have changed because where because the Den Seven has those rounded heads, whereas the ISO twenty three thirty eight has a little more of the flat end. Right. Um, that's a big reason for that mostly interchangeable status. Um, and then the hardness was defined. So if the hardness is of an issue, then, then, you know, you might have to look for the ISO 2338 as opposed to the DIN 7 if you need a little bit higher hardness. Uh, as always, if you have any comments, questions or concerns or would like to request a quote uh, for these items or any other hard to find metric fasteners, uh, feel free to contact me directly at London at EurolinkFSS.com or give us a call at 864-801-0505. Um, and as always, I always recommend checking out the website. We've got a lot of good resources there. I've been putting up more and more resources there. You'll be able to find our other vlog videos um, from so 1 through 16 that I released uh, at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Um, and so I would say that this is kind of season two now, right, that we're working on. And so uh, and also, we're going to have some great, uh, you know, uh, projects that we're going to be putting out soon, um, like uh, charity, you know, helping the community kind of projects. So stay tuned for those in our emails. And uh, and again, if you got anything that uh, that we can help you with, we'll be glad to. Uh, I know that you know with the stuff going on from the sea freights in Asia and all of that, that a lot of things have been getting uh, delayed. And uh, you know. I will say that, you know, we've experienced a couple of hiccups recently with that, that have delayed things by maybe a couple of days and things that were very, very, very rare. It's not something we're used to having to deal with. Uh, we're, we're very reliable, but relative to what we've been hearing in most supply chains that we have been incredibly reliable. And so, so we can be a very good resource to help kind of keep things running smoothly for you. Maybe even if uh, you do have a, a big sea freight coming from Asia that you're waiting on, uh, we, we can just hold you over until it gets there, right? Um, so, uh, thank you guys and have a great week.